aming Diyos. Maraming salamat po sa buhay at lakas na aming tagnay. Sa liwanag ng kaisipan at sa pagkakataon, maipagpatuloy ang pag-aaral ng mga kabataan. Gabay mo po ang bawat isa sa amin. Ano man ang bahagi na nagagampanan, naway maging maayos at matagumpay ang pagtuturo at pag-aaral na aming gagawin sa araw ng ito. Patawarin mo po kami sa aming mga pagkulang at pagkakasala. At sa aming paggawa, ikaw po ang aming makasama. Amen. Blessed morning, Valenzuelanos! Welcome to Quarter 4, Week 2, in Practical Research 1. I am Julian M. Sarmiento, your live streaming teacher from Vicente Pichrinidad National High School. Today, we are going to learn this most essential learning competency, chooses appropriate research design. Are you ready to learn? Let's go! Let us answer our first activity entitled, Fact or Gloss. Kindly comment fact if the statement is true. Bluff if it is not. You are given 5 seconds to provide your answer. Good luck! For question number 1. American Psychological Association or APA is an author date based style. Is it a fact or bluff? Your 5 seconds starts now. Time is up, and the answer is fact. You got it right. For question number two, Integrative Literature Review synthesizes findings from different approaches. Is it a fact or a bluff? Five seconds starts now. And the answer is fact. Exactly right. Question number three. Primary sources are publications in which authors describe the work of others. Is it a fact or a bluff? Time is up and the answer is bluff. The correct answer is secondary sources, not primary sources. For question number four, 
we do literature review to explain the theoretical background of your research project. Is it a fact or a bluff? Your five seconds starts now. Okay, time is up and the answer is fact. Fantastic. And for the last question, citing related literature can be by author or writer, topic, and chronology. Is it a fact or a bluff? Five seconds begin. And the correct answer is fact. Excellent. Let us proceed to the next activity. Four Peaks One Word Practical Research One Edition. Here, you will guess the word revealed by the images. Again, five seconds to guess the magic word. Let's proceed. What is the magic word? The answer is qualitative. The next word. So what do you think is the magic word? And the answer is research. The third word we have. So what do you think is the magic word? Your timer starts now. And the answer is design. So that was great, my dear students. Today, we will learn the different qualitative research design. Let us first recall what research design is. When we say research design, it is a plan on how to answer your research questions, a general structure of the research project, and gives us the idea of how to conduct the research. Take note, research design serves as the blueprint in the conduct of our study. Qualitative research designs answers the how and why of the study. It does not focus on what questions. Qualitative research designs we have phenomenology, case study, grounded theory, historical research, and ethnography. We will learn further on these research designs in the succeeding slides. We have phenomenology. It is an approach to qualitative research that focuses on the commonality of a lived experience within a particular group. The main goal of the approach is to arrive at the description of the nature of the phenomenon. So when we say phenomenon, it is an observable fact or event. Under the phenomenological research design, there are 3 to 10 participants needed and selected for possibly. As a researcher, we must perform bracketing. Bracketing is a scientific process where a researcher suspends or holds in abeyance his or her prepositions, biases, assumptions, theories, or previous experiences to see and describe the essence of a specific phenomenon. How are data collected in phenomenological research? Data are collected through participant observation, conversation with participants, interviews, analysis of texts, and focus group discussions. Data analysis in phenomenological research are done through reading the data, demarcating the data, eliminating irrelevances, groupings, and naming data in into constituents, and arranging the data into themes. 
So here's an example of a phenomenological research. Sarmiento 2022 plans to study the lived experiences of mother educators of senior high school teachers of Vicente Petrinidad National High School. She wanted to find out their lived experiences in the fulfillment of their duties and responsibilities as a mother educator before and during the pandemic, their struggles, coping mechanisms, and success stories. The next qualitative research design is case study. In this research design, there is an in-depth investigation of a single individual, group, or event. It involves study of an issue explored through one or more case as a specific illustration. Case study is a detailed study of persons, group, events, decisions, periods, policies, institutions, or other systems and investigates a phenomenon within its real-life context. The context of the case involves situating the case within its natural setting, which may be physical, social, historical, and or economic. So what are the purposes of case study? First, to describe an individual situation. Example, a person, business, organization, or institution in detail. Second, to identify the key issues of the case. Say, for example, your assignment question should tell you what to focus on. Third, to analyze the case using relevant theoretical concepts from your unit or discipline. In the case study research design, some say 30 to 50 sample size is fine, while others say it's between 5 to 25, and other groups say between 5 to 12. And the participants are possibly selected. To be able to collect the data in a case study, the following can be employed. Interviews, observations, and analysis of primary and secondary sources. So how are data analyzed in case study? We have first the collection of data. Transcription. Transcription is converting audio recordings of interviews or discussions to text format. We have thematic analysis. It is a method of analyzing qualitative data. It is usually applied to a set of texts such as an interview, or transcripts. The researcher closely examines the data to identify common themes, like for example, topics, ideas, and patterns of meaning that come up repeatedly. Next, we have coding. Coding is a process of identifying a passage in the text or other data items like photograph, image, then searching and identifying concepts and finding relations between them. So here's an example of a case study. You are interested to study the problems encountered by senior high school working students on online learning. So the participants are, of course, we have the senior high school working students, the data to be collected will be done through interviews and focus group discussions. Then the, the data will be analyzed and things will be identified via thematic analysis. So the next qualitative research design is grounded theory. This design was first developed by sociologists Barney Glaser and Anselm Tross. This research design is known for theory development. It is used in discovering what problems exist in a social scene and how persons handle them, involves firm formulation, testing, and redevelopment of propositions. Grounded theory is anchored to inductive approach. Inductive approach involves the gathering of data, look for patterns, and then develop 
a theory. So under grounded theory, we have 20 to 60 participants can be the sample size who are purposely selected. Data are collected under the ground theory by interviewing participants with open-ended questions, participant observation or fieldwork, and or focus groups and analysis of artifacts and texts. In grounded theory, data analysis happens at the same time as data collection. Now, how it is done? Find repeating themes by thoroughly reviewing the data. Code the emergent themes with keywords and phrases. Group the codes into concepts hierarchically. And lastly, categorize the concepts through relationship identification. For example, he wanted to know the process of cancer survivorship of Filipinos. Who will be your participants? Yes, Filipino cancer survivors who are purposely selected. How are we going to collect the data? So using robot photo and focus group interview. What is robot photo? It pertains to personal data sheets of the research participants that include their vital, personal, and prof professional information. From the collected data, a model was developed known as the Ribbon of Cancer Survivorship. So then said model describes that briefly or living before, transfusing or accepting the reality, transforming or being strong, and transcending or living beyond the phases of cancer survivorship. The fourth research design is historical research. It describes and examines events of the past to understand the present and anticipate potential future effects. It is concerned with the identification, location, evaluation, and synthesis of data from the past. Since it is historical research, the data are from relics and artifacts of physical evidence. Sources of data are either primary or secondary. Primary sources are those that provide first-hand information or direct evidence. Examples are oral histories, written records, diaries, eyewitnesses, pictorial sources, and physical evidence. Secondary sources are second-hand information. They are description of an event by someone other than an eyewitness or a textbook author's explanation of an event or theory. Now, participants needed for historical research are one to five that are purposely selected. For example, you would like to know how presidential debates influence today's society. By gathering primary and secondary sources and analyzing the data collected, you can come up with themes or patterns. So data analyzed in historical research through theoretical model leading to content analysis, use of patterns or themes, coding system, and quantitative data to validate interpretations. Now, content analysis is a qualitative analysis method that focuses on recorded human artifacts such as manuscripts, voice recordings, and journals. Content analysis investigates these written, spoken, and visual artifacts without explicitly extracting data from the participants. The last qualitative research design is ethnography. It studies human behavior in the cultural context in which it is embedded. So the work of describing a culture, the way of life of a cultural group. It seeks to understand how people live their lives. So take note, ethnography is learning from the people rather than studying people.
since the researcher frequently lives with the people and becomes a part of their culture, here are the three data collection methods be employed. Participant observation, interviews, and immersion. Purposely selected, we have 20 to 30 participants can be employed for ethnography. So for example, you wanted to investigate the cultural beliefs and practices of indigenous people or ITAS. Now, you may have to use nine informants involved. Now, why is it ma'am nine? But you have presented a while ago, 20 to 30. If you think nine informants or participants are enough to answer your research, you may do so. So here, the researcher observed and immersed to the community of ITAS. He or she observed that the traditional beliefs and practices on pregnancy, childbirth, marriage, death, and burial are retained. Now take note, if you are doing the ethnographic study, you have to respect their beliefs and practices. So we have here the data analysis for ethnography. First is to analyze the data collected and come to a deeper understanding of the culture sharing group. Develop themes disclosed in the data. Interpret their significance and meaning. Create a cultural portrait of the group and how it operates. So we are now done with our discussion. Let us proceed to test our understanding of the lesson. So our activity or assessment is entitled, Give Me the Name. So you have to choose the appropriate qualitative research design suited for the topic. Good luck! Okay, question number one. Joshua wants to study the way of life of the Mangyans, their folk ways, beliefs, and practices. What qualitative research design should he utilize? A. Case study B. Ethnography C. Grounded theory Letter D. Historical research Time is up. The correct answer is letter B, ethnography. Question number two. Ajas, a senior high school researcher, aims to investigate the lived experiences of foreign exchange students living in the Philippines. What qualitative research design should he utilize? A. Ethnography B. Phenomenology C. Grounded Theory Letter D. Historical Research Your 5 seconds starts now. Time is up. The correct answer is Letter B. Phenomenology Question number 3 Chris John, a Vicente Petrinidad National High School student, aims to describe and develop a theory on the struggles of COVID-19 patients, their interconnectedness, survival mechanisms. What qualitative research design should he utilize? A. Case study B. Phenomenology C. Grounded theory And letter D. Historical research. Your five seconds starts now. Time is up. The correct answer is grounded theory. Question number four. Miss Hossel, a senior high school teacher at Vicente P. Trinidad National High School, aims to compare the similarities of the strategies utilized in the classroom settings before and during the pandemic. What qualitative research design should she utilize? A. Case study 
B. Ethnography. C. Ground and Theory. Letter D. Historical Research. Your five seconds starts now. Time is up. The correct answer is letter D, historical research. Question number five. Miss Marcos, a senior high school teacher at Vicente Petrinidad National High School, aimed to describe the health behavior of a student on playing online game. What qualitative research design should she utilize? A, case study. B. Ethnography C. Grounded Theory Letter D. Historical Research Your 5 seconds starts now. Time is up and the correct answer is Letter A. Case Study So thank you very much for joining me with our live streaming for week 2. So here is our references and our most essential learning competency chooses appropriate research design. So again, I am Julian M. Sarmiento, your live streaming teacher for Practical Research 1, Quarter 4, Week 2.